Hello, my name is Daniel, and I have an inquiry, if you will. Have you just bought Kenshi after seeing a video that the algorithm showed you on YouTube? Did you purchase, and also soon after fire up the signature lackluster menu of Kenshi, navigate to the new game button, create an exciting new world, probably under the Wanderer start, make your character in the Abomination Factory that is the editor, maybe spend 5 to 30 minutes figuring out how the hell to navigate, then navigate yourself outside the safety of the town, and then see combat firsthand. I bet afterwards your thought process was something like, Oh good heavens, that was quite the tussle. I just got my chuckus whooped by a band of unsavory fellows. Then got on YouTube, searched how the hell do I play this game and stumbled upon my video. Well, let me tell you, I did the same damn thing three years ago when I first started playing this amazing game myself and I promise, by the end of this, you're gonna be whooping the tuckus. No. Actually, let's be real here. You're gonna be whooping ass. And that's on Ocran himself, baby. Alright, some house rules you should abide by starting out on this guide here. If you're just getting into this game, I would strongly recommend playing Kenshi right out of the box, meaning no mods. You don't have to, but the vanilla Kenshi experience is something special. I'd just say wait until your second playthrough at least to add any real game changing mods. In other words, don't be the clown that goes to the Kenshi wiki and types some dumb shit like this. Like, look at this under the Igor page. So I noticed if you take a female character, this happened with an Ashland lady, and speak to him, you can sort of flirt with him and bring him to your side. I'm curious if anyone else has had this interaction. No, no one else has had this interaction because you started playing with so many mods and don't understand the base game well enough to tell what's modded. So you're making a fool of yourself on the wiki and potentially spreading misinformation among the poor souls trying to learn about the game. Imagine reading this going through all the effort of getting that monster in a cage only to figure out you need the recruit prisoners mod please don't be this person that's all i'm trying to say here mods are not bad they're an awesome part of the kenshi community but you know try to see the game as intended first maybe before starting the game as a fucking space marine that's all i'm saying alright before we start anything let's navigate to the option menu this is a game where you want to mess around with the keybinds a little bit, and definitely the options. So, let's gloss over the important ones, and make sure you know what does what. So you can be more informed, and decide how you want Kenshi to play a little bit better. Under general, the only real important one here is fast zone hopping. If you have a good PC with some fat RAM, turn that baby on. If not, keep it off. What this does is keep areas rendered in with your characters in them, even if you're not directly looking at them. Meaning, if you're out exploring with one squad and your base is running with another squad that is working, you can check on both of them much faster rather than waiting for the game to load each area each time when you switch between them. But be aware of course, this can bog down your computer with more areas loaded in. Now under gameplay, this is an important one so listening ears on for real. This is a straight up difficulty setting and is easy to have your game run badly or even crash if you don't understand what these really do. Squad Size Multiplier This affects the amount of characters in a single squad. Global Population Multiplier This affects the amount of squads roaming around. So the important part here is, if you put both of these to the max, I promise your game will crash within like 30 minutes because of the amount of guys spawning. 
gets pretty nuts, so they're best left at default on the safe side. Some areas in the game also have naturally higher spawns, sometimes more or less depending on your actions in the world as well. So, if 10 hungry bandits spawn in one area in a squad, and you set that to 3, you'll get 30 instead. Now, if they spawn in groups of 30 naturally over in, say, Skinner's Roam, and you set it to 3, well, you'll have about 90 hungry bandits per squad out there. That's a lot of hungry boys. Better feed them, huh? Town Rate Event Size Similar to squad size multiplier, this bad boy makes the attacks on your base larger. Same logic applies though. If you have a default of 15 black dragon ninjas per raid, and then you turn it to 4, well, now you have 60 to fight now. Good luck. Town Raid Events Frequency This makes raids happen more often, and that's it. I found setting this too high sometimes results in many raids in a short period of time and then none ever again until you import the saves as a heads up. And the town attacks frequency. This one is a little special. These are dictated by the natural passing of squads, usually some form of bandits. If they are within a certain distance of your base slash town, they will sometimes attempt to take it over meaning they will attack it with the goal of incapacitating all of your guys and then dumping them out like trash, claiming that they are now the new owners until you take it back and dismemberment. You know those arms and legs you're born with? Well, they can get chopped off, if you fight something mean enough, that is. But that means they can also be replaced with something better. Strongest characters in this game that you can make often rely on high-end robotic limbs. They are that good. I'd highly recommend leaving this to frequent if you want more interesting gameplay in general. I'll leave the graphics up to you. These are what mine look like, but I would just say don't turn anything to the max or to the lowest with these sliders. The game really doesn't like it. Even with high-end cards or CPUs. Audio's up to you. If you're deaf and reading captions or something, you will be happy to read that you do not need to suffer the loudest sound ever. Corpse flies, buzzing at a strong 30 decibels despite leaving the corpses in another part of the map already. Easily the most important mod to be made for this game. Overwhelmingly positive. Number one mod for Kenshi. HMLA Seville and Essential Vore very play throwing. Thank why you. Last part is controls. These are highly optional, but these are some buttons I want to bring to your attention that might make things easier. Quick save and quick load, aka the training wheels. No shame in abusing this starting out. It's not an easy game even if you are well informed. A lot of learning is trial and error, and the alternative is often losing hours of progress. My personal favorite is accidentally clicking a locked door in town, which defaults to your character to breaking and entering, and often with a swift and generous beating from some town guards. Find them far apart from one another and use them well. Rotate camera by far the most important button in this game, and the one you will be likely using the most. I put mine on my side mouse key, I feel it flows well with the mouse turning itself. And if you don't have a mouse with side buttons, then I'm really sorry to hear that. Other buttons you want to observe are the character stats and toggle map. You'll be looking at the map a lot in this game. It's how you travel long distances, assuming the pathing doesn't break halfway through that is. For character stats, if you like watching your skills go up in real time, you'll be using it a lot, like I like to do. If you have the same kind of autism that likes to watch the numbers go up, well, we have something in common. That wraps up the option awareness, and now it's time to get cracking. Watch this. New game. Boom. Wanderer start. First one there. But what's that down below? Oh hell. Advanced options. Yeah, you thought we were done, but there's options within the options. They're like options, but more advanced, or so I'm told. Boom, click them. What's all this, barnacles? Well, I'll tell you. Hunger time? Don't touch that one. Chance of death? Don't touch that either. Global damage multiplier? You best leave that alone. Production speed, research speed, building speed? Uh, I'll put it like this. If you want a slow game, you leave those at one. If you want a normal game, you go ahead and bring them bad boys up to two. Number of nests, ignore that. 
Bandits loot player, leave it checked. Easy prospecting. I don't like the word easy, leaving it off. Now we are ready to begin, almost. Go ahead and make your character. If you have not seen the screen, then you're in for a goddamn treat. Race and gender don't matter for this guide, but make no mistake, it does matter in game. Different genders and races get treated differently by different characters. I won't spoil anything, so pick whatever you want and what sounds the best. The racial stat bonuses are at the bottom left if you want to make an informed decision. With that, take your time. I'll be making my character. Let's see what I can come up with. This just in, police uh, officers in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, were asking people to be on the lookout for a man who robbed a store. And I think, yeah, I think we do, we do have his description. Can we take that? Let's take his description. Okay. I made Snip Snop, and we will be showing you how to get things rolling in this game. Or maybe learn something new if you're here to see the video despite being well informed yourself. Also, this will be a true and honest guide. While there are many ways to break this game wide open, and more effective ways to do what I'm going to show you, I respect this game immensely. So I'm going to show you the best way and the most comprehensive and rewarding way to play. That will do more than just show you how to get your stats high. But will also show you enough to get the gears turning after you're done watching hopefully. I'm not here to give you diamond armor. I'm here to point you with a diamond spawn. So here we are, the hub, and not the one that shows up when you type P in the search bar. This is where most runs begin, and is where ours will as well. If I go a little fast, it's because I've played this game a ton. It takes a while to get used to the controls, because Kenshi is a very unique game, but I'm sure you'll get there too. I'm also sure you're excited to actually learn something in-game almost 13 minutes into a video guide anyway. First off, if you hold down the alt button, it will highlight everything you can pick up off the ground. It also illuminates all shop signs so you can find places of business easily when entering new towns. First place we're going to is this unassuming small shack, one of three non-ruined buildings in the entire hub. It's kind of in the middle of the whole area. It's got that hidden starter money we want. So, go ahead and head over there. We are going to take and sell everything out of this house pretty much. Even the chest here can be lockpicked without consequence. Also, there are some lore pages you can read if you care as well in here. There are various notes and books you can find. They got that kind of Dark Souls lore dump strat going on, kind of. After pillaging this fine abode like a crackhead hunting for copper wire, we will head over to the pawn shop aka the bar across the street and sell all of this stuff we just got. Also don't spend any of this money please, it's vital for later. This will give us a fine upstart on capital, our cats. And no, not the animal. You see, the monetary unit used in Kenshi is known as cats. It's widely believed to be named after an old ruler of the second empire, but no one who is organic really remembers the second empire or the ruler himself. But imagine having money named after you. That would be badass. So that's cats. It buys food, hires mercenaries, building supplies, and most importantly, lets you hire more people to expand your squad. Hopefully, you will get over 3,000 from this. If not, that's just fine. We can make do. I only got 2,800-ish on this run, so if you got less or more, well, praise or blame it on RN Jesus. After this, there's not much to do in this town. So, we need to seek City Lights, and make our fortune in the more established city of, you guessed it, Squin, the only other place marked on your map as of right now. First off, go ahead and quick save before we run over there. It's not far, and in my testing, out of the 10 runs I did, I only almost got caught by bandits once. 
Even then, I made it to the gates and was still just fine, but you never know. To get over there the easiest way, go ahead and open your map. You should see good old Squin on there. So literally just click over there and watch. This is how you will travel most of the time when your destination is not on screen. Soon, if everything goes smoothly for you, you should be at the lovely town of Squin, a kind and welcoming people with a special slur for each race of people that are not them, assuming they are not allied. But you are not allied, so be prepared to be called your slur of choice here and there. Other than that, these guys are kind of the most welcoming faction in game, but barely. Uh, I won't get into it, that would be a whole nother video itself. While we are here in town, we want to find a bar. Remember, you can hold the alt button to make it easier to find. After you get inside, we want to talk about something important. Today's subject is slavery. We need to use our money to make money. Or better yet, our Daniels to make Daniels. I've thought about it, and from now on, I will refer to cats as Daniels. Or Dan's for short. What we are going to do next depends entirely on your current financial situation. If you currently have at least 3k Dans in the bank, then you're in the green. If not, we're going to try and circumvent this issue by finding a unique recruit called Ruka. She looks like this, can't miss her. She will join you for free straight up. The catch is, there's a chance that she might not spawn here in Squin. There are two bars in the town for us to check to see if we got lucky or not. So we got three options here pretty much. Option A, the ideal one, you have 3k, you get Ruka by choosing the right dialogue options of course, I'll leave you to figure those out, and you have money to spare afterwards. Option B, you have 3k, but Ruka didn't spawn here. But you can still hire any of the guys who want at least 3k to join you, and you might have a small amount left after. Option 3, no Ruka, under 3k Daniels, kinda got the short end of the stick here, ain't looking too hot. If this is your case and you are unable to hire anyone, we have to do something kind of beneath us. We have to mine some copper ourselves, I'm sorry, I know. I know it really sucks, but we have to do it. Don't worry, soon, soon, we will have people to do that sort of thing for us, but right now, we gotta do it or we won't ever get there. Alright, so on this side of town, there is a copper node outside. Kind of right here from the gate. Go tear that shit up. Get like four or five copies, go sell that shit, get some Dans, and pick your laborer of choice. But now that you have your worker, we can get the Daniels flowing. Well, almost flowing that is. See, we need to set something important up that will help us the whole game, and more importantly, you. I'm not gonna have you manually mine copper and iron for two hours for nothing. Actually, by the end of this, this will all be automated with like 8 or 9 workers under your employment constantly getting you that money while you focus on the finer pursuits of Kenshi. So I promise this will be worth it. It just takes a little time to get the ball rolling. And to show for it, you'll have a strong foundation to start from. Also keep in mind, food is needed, especially for workers. Even more so because laborious tasks in this game drain a character's food faster. And even more, more so, because Shek naturally need more food just to exist. This is why when you build in their territory, they want food from you and nothing else. So, make sure your worker has some dried meat in their inventory, they will need it soon. After food is taken care of, it's time to head over to the town. After food is taken care of, it's time to head over to the travel shop. It's this tower at the end of town, the same end where the ore deposits are outside the gate. If the shop is closed, you'll have to wait until daytime for it to open. This is around 6 a.m.-ish. Afterwards, you want to buy at least one basic first aid kit. It's the tiny guy right here, the cheapest one. I like to buy a few to be safe and not have to worry about it for a while until much later on. They're cheap as hell anyway and take up almost no inventory space. That is, unless you have a skeleton in your party. The robot guys. Then you need to buy a skeleton repair kit. They also cost a lot, but they will last you a while, and they work the same way as medkits do. 
After this, it's time to teach you the job system. Almost everything in this game can be automated to some extent through your characters, even vital tasks. Make sure you have your worker selected. Then next, hold down the shift key and click the big ass button that says medic. Afterwards, you should notice that they now have a job to do, and it's one that should always be on top of the list, no matter what, no matter what they're doing. I must emphasize, set this on every single character you get from now on and make sure they have medical supplies on them always. Next up, time to get to work finally. Make sure you have your worker selected, find that copper node, but do the same thing we did with the medic thing, hold shift and click. Now we are mining copper forever, until it's full that is, but it's pretty badass huh? But not really, we can speed this up with more workers. So. Our goal right now is to get more Dans and hire more workers. Whoever you can find in the town for now will be okay. More workers means faster Daniels. While they're doing the hard work of mining ore, you can carry the ore and sell it to the shops. I strongly recommend getting a backpack for this for your main character. They sell backpacks in that same shop you got the first aid kits from. Look for the trader backpack. It looks like this. It's the best one you can get right now. So, just keep trying until you can get one. It helps a ton. So, right now, you should have a worker mining and your main guy selling it as they mine it. That's fucking teamwork. Now, the only thing you have to watch out for is bandit attacks. It might not happen today. Or tonight. Or tomorrow, maybe. But it will happen when you least expect it. These assholes will roll up and beat the shit out of your workers and possibly steal their food. Just keep an eye out and run to the gate guards when their character portrait turns red. That'll indicate they're getting attacked. After you run to the gate guards, they'll beat up the bandits and take care of them for you. Worst case, you might have to put them in a bed at a bar to heal for like a day, so it's not the end of the world even if you're too late to run them to the gate. With that, I'm going to do a bit of a jump and let you make some money. I'll be doing the same. I'm going to shoot for 8 workers or less for max efficiency, depending on how the bars look, and to stockpile at least 15k Daniels, and then we will jump there and continue on. While you wait to stockpile a strong workforce and money, I recommend listening to something in the background to break up the monotony if you get bored. May I suggest the Chris Chan, A Comprehensive History by Gino Samuel on YouTube. It's more than 2 days long at this point. Alright, I did some off-camera mining and got super lucky, guys. Oh my god, this is so freaking hype. Please like and subscribe for more Fortnite skin compilations. No, but for real though, we're looking pretty good. I've got all the ore deposits around here fully stocked with workers. Everyone is pretty much fed and has meds on them. We're a little bit above the 15k mark for the Daniels we needed. By now, you should have something similar to this too. Assuming you've stockpiled money and have a good workforce under your belt, we can start getting out of the whole homeless situation. Yeah, you heard me. We're on our way to becoming real homeowners. This is truly a fantasy game. So you're in the market for a house, huh? I know just the one for you, bro. It's a real nice pad. Trust me, it's really classy. You're gonna love it. No, no, not that one. Further down, further down. Y you don't want that dump. What, that trash heap? Trust me, bro. This is gonna blow your mind. Just a little farther. No, no, not that one either. Keep going, keep going. Come on, come on. Let's get serious. Oh, 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 oh. Stop, stop, stop. Yeah, right there. There it is, that's that's the one, what I tell you. Huh? It even has flooring in it still. And, you wanna know the best part? Listen here, click on it. Look at the bottom left. 7,200 Daniels, that's a fucking steal. It's right next to the gate, a few steps away from those ore deposits. The, the general goods store is right next door. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. What do you think?
Yeah, joking aside, we're gonna buy this rundown, decrepit pile of runes and turn it into something special. The main reason for buying this one is that it's close enough to the ore deposits as to not fuck up the AI pathing later on. So of course now, we will buy this lovely abode. Click on the building and select the buy option located at the bottom left. Dan's well spent. But you will notice there is some work to do. We need building materials, a lot of them. Thankfully, there are a few places to buy them from nearby, most notably next door to our new home. Go ahead and head inside and go buy all the building materials for sale and take them to our new home and get to building. You can also select all your workers to come over and help if you want to speed this up. This most likely won't finish our house with what we've bought, so let's get ready to travel for some more building materials. Nearby, there's a way station with another general goods shop located inside that usually sells tons of building materials, and it's not that far at all. It is located right here on the map. Once you get there, head inside and buy all the building materials you can. Now we run back. With the building materials in hand, we can now turn this fixer upper into a a, a, a fixed and upped, a fixed and uppished, a fixed and upping, uh, a house. We did it, boys. We're living like people with human rights almost now. Now it's time to get learned and do very intelligence. Due to the apocalyptic setting, public education is not necessarily a s mainstream thing yet, but they do sell books for you to get learned and smart from. They actually sell them across the street and, you guessed it, once again we need to go to the travel shop for vital resources. We need some books. Preferably as many as you can buy as soon as you walk in the door. Buy all of them, and now we need somewhere to put these mysterious worded papers and siphon their secrets using a specialized machine known as the research bench. The small one to be exact. To access it, look deep inside. It's hidden deep within you. You need to open your mind. You need to manifest it to the corporeal realm. You need to press the B button on your keyboard. This will open the building menu. You see, it's been with us the whole time. There isn't much for us to make right now, so choose the one that says tech and choose the small research bench. Place it somewhere in your new crib and use or get three more building materials. Also, may I bring to your attention the building commands located at the bottom right if you want to get crazy and turn it or something. Now we can put our books into it, and whatever other stuff you can't be bothered to carry on your person also. Since it's full of books now, we can get very, very smart. So the idea here is, we need to research storage technology right now. So we can automate this bullshit right now, because I'm sure you're sick and tired of walking around collecting the ore over and over again, but it's about to get really, really easy. Get ready to have your mind blown out your ass cheeks. At the bench, select show research go down to the industry tab and select the ore storage shake your hands at the bench until it's done now when you open up the building menu you will notice that you can create something called copper and ore storage these need iron plates to make but don't worry they sell them next door at the general goods shop and they don't cost that much either we want to put these storages, the copper and the ore one, at the left side of the house. This it will blow your mind later. There is a reason for this placement. Speaking of placement, it can be a pain in the ass, but try to leave some room between them so your dudes don't get stuck. Kind of like how I have them arranged right here. After these are built, check your squad tab and click right here. Go over to the AI section up top. Oh no. Oh no, there's even more options in this game, in the game. Yeah, you thought we were done. But nah, you see the one that says ditch items? 
I don't know if that's checked by default, but make sure it is checked. Now, with the storage system you built, your guys will straight up take the ore there for you and fill them automatically. Deadass. You don't even have to carry it over. They will do most of the work for you. You just have to sell it and make fat stacks of Dan's. But it doesn't stop there though. Let's head over to the general supply store next door. So as long as someone's in your house keeping the interior rendered in, you can straight up sell the ore from the fucking boxes. You don't even need to carry it over to the store. How badass is that? So we have one last issue. What about food? Let's head back over to the research bench. We can fix that. You bet your ass we can fix that. Under core, I'm gonna lock the one that says item storage real quick. Now, shake your hands at the bench, and now you have something you can build called the food storage. Build it. Make sure to keep it full, and now everyone will come and eat automatically without having to go through each of their inventories to make sure they don't starve to death while mining. Enjoy your infinite money generator. You just have to check over here and sell the stuff whenever you're ready. The money will be waiting for you. Now that we have a serious operation going on, we are basically balling hard as hell right now. But if you get caught lacking outside the town, your money is not going to save you from getting your ass beaten, then enslaved, and then hauled off to a berth to mine for someone else, which is not good. So I'm sure you're very excited to start learning how to whoop some serious ass. You see, the arts of balling and whooping ass go hand in hand. Not many know that you can be balling even balling hard as hell, but never whoop a single inch of ass. But if you're balling and get your ass whooped, well, <laughs> hey, you're still balling if you, kn you know what I mean. If not, one day I hope you'll understand and spread these teachings to others the same way I have to you in our time spent together in this video. What I mean is we're going to fix the major issue in your stat screen. Most notably, your attack stat, defense stat, and also your toughness stat. Sweet Ocran, we got some work to do. You see, we won't be able to achieve anything in this game if you can't chase off bandits at the very least, let alone fight against one of the major powers in this game. But before we deal with any of that, you need at least one fairly competent fighter. And I'm going to show you how to achieve that fairly fast and naturally without abusing the socks off this game. Now. We are going to quickly create one strong and capable fighter from the ground up and get you used to the combat, or watching combat that is, rather than train a bunch of useless meat shields slowly into slightly capable but still useless meat shields, we want at least one strong fighter to start with. So first off, take your favorite character so far, or the one you want to be combat oriented, and then take another to act as side medic for emergencies. We will use two guys for this. Also, if you want more squad members, I would just like some variety at this point. That way station we went to for the building supplies nearby, they have a bar with a ton of guys to hire if you want something other than check. To get started, we want some field supplies because we are heading out to fight. So let's get our shopping done. I'll show you what we need. Armor. The difference between taking 50 damage to the head and getting put in a coma for 5 minutes and bleeding out to death and taking 20 damage and only getting knocked out for 70 seconds, waking up and healing yourself. So we want to make sure we can take a few hits at least, and wearing armor is the best solution. In town here, there is a convenient shop that sells armor, so let's stop there. The shop looks like this for reference. Explaining armor mechanics is a whole nother video to explain properly, so here's a crash course. Let's see at the top here, uh, the quality of the armor, very important. Standard or higher is what we're shooting for right now. Then there's resistance, how good the protection it offers against damage. Then there is coverage, how much of a chance the attack will actually get reduced by the armor on that specific spot. 100 means it will always reduce that damage, and 50 means there's half a chance your armor does anything when struck there. With that, I recommend buying the best quality samurai cloth pants and samurai armor for the protection they provide. 
The boots, helmet, shirt are up to you. Pick whatever looks cool. This setup should be light enough for us to run fast enough in, and also, the heavy armor penalties from the samurai armor is good for us. So handicapping ourselves is a good strategy, so let's use this to our advantage to level up faster. Next up, how about we go get a weapon? Now, this might sound a bit counterproductive like before with the armor, but we want the worst one we can find, either in the shop next door, or even from one of our workers if you kept one of their rusted junk weapons for some reason, which would be useful. Try and get one. The easiest way for us to get one is to hire another nobody at the bar just to take their weapon. Rusted junk is the worst grade of weapon, and that's what we're aiming for. Why? Well, the more we have to hit an opponent to murder them, the more experience we'll get from fights, speeding up the training process. Are you fucking serious? I'm now that the gear is sorted, we need some supplies. Make sure your wingman has a few medkits on them. They'll be standing on the side watching your ass get beat and coming to heal you if you get knocked out hardcore. Also, we need a bedroll for faster healing. Uh, they sell them at... You know where they sell them. They fucking sell them at the travel shop. By now you should be plated in good armor have a laughably bad weapon, and also have your wingman with some medical supplies on them. I think we're ready to go. Our first real adventure awaits us. We're heading to a nice little place called Skinner's Room. Now, this is an area that's pretty safe to fight, and there's an abundance of low-level crackheads to battle. Before we head over there, let's learn something new that'll help us with traveling. You see the image of the uh, guy running down here? It's important. Select both of your characters and cycle to the one where it has the red and black ones running. This will mean they will travel at the same speed when they are both given a travel order at the same time. Very convenient. To get over there, it's right here on the map. It's kind of tinted a strong orange color. And it's a pretty large area overall, so go ahead and click over there. And now, our journey begins. We are traveling. Big time. Now, here are some travel tips since it can be hella sketchy sometimes. Sometimes you make it no issue. Sometimes you look away for a second and your guys are fighting the entire world, so your strongest weapon is your eyes. Keep them peeled. This lets you choose your battles, and be aware of future ones. For now, let's hope that we are faster than our pursuers and leave them in the dust. If not, try and go around them or wait for them to pass. There are many ways to navigate an issue after all, and this holds true even in Kenshi. Well, I'll see you at Skinner's Room. Now here we are, Skinner's Room. You see that big ass group of hungry bandits behind me? That's the reason we're here a lot of XP. But before we fuck with them, let's set up our camp so we can do this right. That sleeping bag we brought needs to be placed using that building menu. The same as the research bench and all that. It's under the camp section. Find a nice place to put it. I like putting mine near these weird ruined houses, but it doesn't really matter where you put it. You can even add a little campfire too. It doesn't actually cost anything. Look at how cozy that looks. You think this game has big bugs that crawl on you when you sleep on the ground? I hope not. We have a place of rest. Now let me teach you something else useful before we begin to harass the homeless. You see where it says block, hold, passive and all that? You probably guess that those are useful, and they are. For our fighter, we want them on taunt. This draws aggro a little bit better and we want our medic guy on passive and hold so he doesn't get himself into trouble as easy. Just make sure to keep him far away from the fighting and he should be fine. Also, I should mention, if you have brought any food with you, now's the time to hide it. Just give it to the medic for safekeeping for now. Once they knock you out, these guys are actually starving, so they will steal and eat your food in a heartbeat. They're as hungry as they get out here in Skinner's Room, but yeah, that's pretty much all we need to do. I'd say it's time to get ourselves into trouble. I'll show you how this works, but I'll tell you right now. We are not gonna win this fight. 
We are not going to win the next 10 fights. We might not even knock any of them down until about 12 fights in. But we can do this all day. And each time we do, we get closer and closer to becoming an ass whooping machine that turns regular ass into a finely whooped ass. Now it's time to send your man into battle and watch. Oh, we just got fucked up for real. I didn't see Snip Snop land a single solitary hit against one of those guys, but that's alright. I want to show you something crazy. The real reason we're out here harassing the large group of unwashed starving bandits here. With that armor on, you should have only gotten lightly knocked out and not put into a coma. And we can get up whenever we want to. And when we want to get up is the first possible second that the game lets us, while the bandits are still nearby, as fast as possible. But before that, let's take a look at our toughness stat. It went up a little bit with that scuffle, not too bad, but watch this. That's pretty nuts, right? It went skyrocketing. When your character gets up near any large amount of enemies after being knocked out, be they weak or strong, you can get some real toughness experience as long as they're close enough to you when you get up. You see, the toughness stat allows you to take less damage, you die slower, it becomes harder for you to get put into a coma. It's the most important stat on any character. It's going to allow us to stay in fights longer and get more experience until you eventually start winning them. It is easy to overdo it and get put into a coma like I did here. Or worse, lose a limb. But that's why we have a medic with us. So let's put him in that camp bed to use. It accelerates the healing so we can get back into the action faster and keep getting stronger and stronger. At this point, it's about grinding out those stats. The toughness one, which can go up by 20 levels if you're lucky enough to be able to take a lot of hits and get up over and over while they're still near you, in which it only gets easier to level up. After a few fights, you might even see your guy start landing hits, blocking more attacks, and after a few more after that, you might knock out an opponent or two, and before you know it, you'll be whooping some real cheeks, and be ready to pick fights with more dangerous opponents like dust bandits, farther and farther down the line until you see yourself approaching the top of the food chain. There's a lot more I could show you. How to operate a base, set it up efficiently, hunt for artifacts for better buildings and research, weaken faction leaders, or even ally with them. Tons more even. But I think you're ready to go after it on your own. You have a good source of income, the knowledge to make strong warriors, and the whole map out there to explore. I could show you how to do a lot of things easier and better than you will most likely know at your first try, but this is where I feel I must leave you. It may be abrupt, but it is intended. You still have a lot to figure out, and I have just only begun to open the door for you. But I believe it's your job to open it the rest of the way, to learn as I did, through trial and curiosity, and sometimes misery, to enjoy this game as it was meant to. I hope this has been a good gateway into the Tidelock Moon that is Kenshi, and its strange and exciting apocalyptic world. I hope it is just as cruel and enticing to you as it was to me.